And Adam Silver, the commissioner of basketball, gave the players an opportunity to use their platform. He slapped Black Lives Matter on the court, gave them all a bunch of sayings they can put on their jersey and said, all right, play ball. Players got frustrated, but only after Jacob Blake got shot did that frustration boil over. And that boiled over frustration manifested itself after days. This wasn't an immediate reaction after days into a strike by one team of one game. What's the goal? What's your purpose? If you're so angry the way George Hill was of the Bucks when he said, what the hell are we doing here anyway? You're not striking one game. You're leaving the bubble as a team. You are picking up your uniforms and you are walking out of the bubble. You're stopping in Atlanta and getting home to Milwaukee. What is your end game? The frustration I felt is there was no action. I kept saying to Coca, and Coca was very, very outspoken in this regard to me, rightly so, saying, so tell me, David, when are they going to do something? And then word came out that the Bucks were doing something. And Coca and I said, all right, this could be the start. What they did is while they were in the locker room, they did not come out after tip off, after it was clear they were not going to play. They got the Lieutenant Governor of Wisconsin and the Attorney General of Wisconsin on the phone and they had a conversation about, okay, here's what's wrong in Wisconsin. We want to change it. How do we change it? Now, of course, the answer is by voting. That's the number one thing you can do to cause change. That is the ultimate power that all athletes and all citizens have is to vote. LeBron James, very acutely aware of that fact, has committed tons of resources, time and money into getting people out to vote, registering them, et cetera. The next thing you can do is make sure that there is awareness. That's a very popular thing that happened yesterday. People saying it's great that the NBA players boycotted because it's bringing awareness to this issue. And my answer to that was, who wasn't aware of this issue? It's been above the fold. That's an expression, by the way, the old newspaper expression, when something's above the fold, the newspaper comes folded. If there's a big headline, you look to see the size. The New York Times is famous for this. You look at how bold the headline is and what font it is. The bigger the font and the more bold, the more important the news under, according to the New York Times. So are we talking about making this story bigger, a bigger font, more bold? Are we talking about the fact that there could be people in this country who aren't aware of the systemic Racism and racial injustice, that can't be. I think what you're talking about is that racism still exists. And if you thought that the killing of George Floyd and the paralyzing of Jacob Blake was going to all of a sudden wake up and no one would be racist, that can't be your thought, your goal. That's not true. If you're using these shootings and as a way to try to educate people who could still choose not to be racist, that's something to talk about, putting money into resources to educate. If you're talking about trying to get rid of people in power who you think are racist, who you think do not believe in what you believe in, the way to do that is to vote them out of office. So the bucks started to act. Then what happened? Then all eyes were on what would be the next move people started to say, if they don't play for one day and then they start playing, how, how can they be satisfied? Will they be able to say we accomplished our goal? Will they change their goal from wanting to eradicate racism to merely saying we wanted to bring attention to it and it worked? Will they change their goal to say we wanted the NBA owners to stand up and start doing more and the commissioner to do more, so we wanted to let them know that we had the power? That could have been it. Were they trying to make permanent change to our society? That can't have been the goal because you can't go back and play a day later and say that was your goal. Well, I guess you could say that was your goal. You can't say it was accomplished. I was on a radio station this morning, I think in, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, and we were talking about 
if the NBA continues, is all of this action by the players a failure? Why shouldn't they leave the bubble and dedicate all of their day to doing this? Take a stand like Maya Moore did, as we talked about yesterday. And I said, and I'll say it again, there's enough time in the day to play a two and a half hour game and to make a difference in your community. It doesn't have to be a binary equation where it's you either are an activist or you're doing your job. You can both do your job and be an activist. There's time in the day. It is not a failure what the players did if they return to play. It's a failure if they return to play and let this moment pass and need another black man to be shot. It wouldn't be a success if they walked out of the bubble and ended the playoffs. The success would be walking out of the bubble, ending the playoffs, and then acting 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Commit yourself to the change, be that change. <laughs> 